Well, I think, uh, you know, I look at him, I, he's a typical lefty. He's uh, a little smarter, a little smarter than I felt. Very, smarter. very true. I think, you're, you know, he's, uh, he's eccentric. I think a lot of lefties are. Um, the one thing I really liked about him was uh, the aggressiveness, the style of pitching that he had. Um, very much attack, attack mode. And that's one of the things that a lot of lefties never really got a lot of credit for, I felt like. Um, you know, they always think the right-handers are the power throwers, which most of the time they are. But I felt that uh, when you were given those opportunities to set up and stuff, you, you know, you, you dominate and you establish yourself. And, and then the, the eccentric part was like with your hat, how just disheveled mess it was and spit and everything else is all over it. And that's what I liked. Like it was just, you didn't follow the, 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 the book of what, what pitching should be. It was just like, I'm going to do my thing and dominate. Yeah, it was fun. I mean, like I said, back in those days, just, you know, you got worn out by your teammates and you always wanted a good right-handed setup man to follow you in because mm -hmm. in case you had to walk a guy. Or, you know, you're facing the best lefty in the team usually. Exactly and you know right. how that goes. I mean, yeah. and you've just mastered it. So it's an awesome thing when you can go out there and you know, like, hey, I know how I throw every hitter. I know what he can hit, what he can't hit. And that's what you've just uh, proved on in your career. Because when you first start out, you're, you threw hard, you know? Yeah. And by the end, you now you're like, it doesn't matter how hard I throw, it's where I throw it, you know? Exactly and, right. I used to always hear that saying, McDonald's, McDonald's, location, location, McDonald's, you know, <laughs> they would never sold trains of hamburgers or they weren't in the right location. Right. And that's what I, I thought, you know, I was like, I understood what I had to do. And so it's like, you know, you understand in your, your abilities more than you do, uh, you know, the young kids like the Osage kid come up, you know, he throws hard. And, so, mm -hmm. and you sit there, you, you know, we all get jealous. We're like, ah, he throws hard, but it's, we know what we have to do. We're yeah. confident within ourselves and we mastered our, our trait, which is, you know, Kudos to you. You've done it. You've done it in the, Thank you. yeah, the highest uh, times and games. I mean, that's <laughs> that's. I've always choked in the pressure situations. You were always great. <laughs> the two-two. Howard strikes out, and Lopez puts up another scoreless inning. When I broke in, it was uh, Darren Oliver. Was uh, so he's. I had a lot of guys that were both starters and relievers. So I had him and Steve Reed was actually was great because he was a right-hander. He played for the Giants. Uh, for about a season. Yeah, I played with him was. in Baltimore, yeah. Awesome so he guy. Is, uh, he was teaching me stuff from the side because I was still learning. I was a work in progress. And then I had him and I had Jeff Facero as well. And Facero was another guy that was a swing guy. He's been a starter for a long time in his career. He's been a believer as well. And so I think they kind of paved the way in the sense of kind of like you were talking about, like don't stop giving these guys a lot of credit. And that was the biggest thing that it took me forever to actually realize what they were talking about. Because every time I'd look, I'd look in the – in the batter's box and see who I'm facing and yeah, I mean, you let fa those numbers yeah, jump think about it, you know, You're facing Larry Walker, uh, Barry Bonds back in those days. They, yeah. It wasn't those like Tony Gwynn, Mark Grace. These right. guys could, they could hit Jim Tomey. You're like, oh. Right, I'm seeing a baseball card. I'm seeing, I'm seeing exactly. my childhood. And you just, once here. you get your first mega superstar out, you're like, oh, I belong. I can, exactly. you know, I used to laugh because I was like, well, they get paid 20 million. I'm getting paid like 200 grand. <laughs> so I was like, if I could just get it over the plate, you know, right. and That's get exactly them out, right. then I'm like, hey. Uh, I'm and they remember you. They remember you. Yeah, I know because I had uh, my first. My, I remember facing Barry Bonds. My very first time was in AT and T. Well, I think it was Pac Bell at the time, but I faced him in San Francisco, and it was uh, my rookie year was 2003, and he, had, I think he was right in the middle of his MVP campaigns, and and I struck him out the very first time I faced him, and I was just like, I wanted to walk off the field, and, and like that was it, like hang up my spikes and go home. I was like, that's it. That's a good way to end it. That's my goal, you know? He's a tough cookie, yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, it's the one thing I got going for me is that he actually remembers me to this day, so. You fit. Got him. On the road, man, people are throwing stuff at you, you know, saying stuff to you. And you just have to be able to, to to kind of knock it off and laugh at it and have fun. You, know, you have fun with the fans. There's some really nice people you meet out there, but then there's some people who are just, you know, Philadelphia. You know, I'm from Pennsylvania, and I go home and they would just wear me out. And I was like, I mean, one, I will tell you this, a quick story. I was with Felipe Alou in Montreal and the old, the vet, they would throw stuff down yeah. at it. And I mean, I had mustard and, you know, cheese whiz from the cheese steaks that they used to make and <laughs> beer poured on me. And I went out to the mountain, I got the ball from Felipe. And he's like, you know, you shouldn't be eating in the bullpen. I was like eating. I was like, I'm surviving out here. I was, they were just bombarded. I was like skittle marks from them. Just, I was like, man, this ain't fun. But uh, then that's when you know. But you get that, that temperament going. You know that they fire you up because they're just all over yeah. you. And you're like, I just. I told one guy, so I'm gonna go in. I was in Atlanta. He was, some guy was just wearing me out. I said, you know what? I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna hit Chipper right in the head. 
And I said, it's going to be your fault. I said, I'm going to end Chipper right here. You guys are not going to have a chance. But he looked at me. He was like, what? I was like, I just like to mess with him. But because uh, Chipper would have came out and killed me. He would have picked him up and slammed me down. And, you know, but, uh, yeah, but uh, for the bullpen now, it's like a little bit different in the sense that the uh, smartphones and social media and everything else. So people look you up. You feel like an animal. I feel like an animal. Like you said, you can't react. So you have to just sit there. So now I feel I'm very sympathetic when I go to the zoo now for all these animals because <laughs> you just stare. You get stared at. You get yelled at. You can't react. Um, but now with the smartphones and everything else, everybody knows everything about your life, and they can look you up. And you know, I was getting worn out uh, about my A ball numbers, which I appreciated the fact that I'm I made it to the big leagues as bad as I was in A ball. So the guy's yelling out my numbers, and I'm like, oh man, I thought I left those way behind, and obviously they're. Now they're just like that in, the, in a second. They're on their phone and, and people are yelling at you. But, you know, that it's, you never get used to it. But like you said, it makes you mentally tough. But you never get used to it when they start yelling about your family or your, your wife or your kids and stuff. That stuff, like you said, kind of locks you in and gets you fired up. Not that you need any more motivation, but sometimes you need that little extra gear in 162 games right, and that'll you're, do it. You're, after, you're over 10 years now plus in the video. This is what you're like, 13th, 14th year? Yeah. And, it, you know, it's sometimes it takes a little bit to get going up. It's not the, uh, the roar of the crowd anymore. Now you have to find that inner thing. And, yeah. like I said, you're still doing it. I mean, that, the, the, play, the play for the playoffs is, is your ultimate. Once you get there, I tell kids, once you get there, there's no better feeling. You'll want to fight for that feeling every year. Yeah, That's why you look great. at the Yankees and stuff back in the day. I was like, God, it, how awesome was that to just run through those playoffs like they did? And, yeah. You know, and you're doing it now. I mean, it's just like, you know, every year you're like, oh, we have a chance. And mm -hmm. with the team that they just assembled for you guys is awesome. Yeah. And it's your job now to, you know, pass that torch off to this Osage and Oakert. And mm -hmm. These guys are coming up and they just need your knowledge. I mean, they need to learn how to, to throw the pitches to who, you know, it's not always about how hard you throw it or it's about where he can't hit it. Sometimes, right. you, sometimes you try to find their, they have like a hole. It's not like a, a hole where they won't hit the ball. It's just that they, don't, they can take away their power. And that's what I try to explain to these guys on the minor leagues is if you can throw the ball where you can without, you know, worrying about velocity and stuff and just give them the hit, it, they'll make outs. You know, sometimes they'll get hits on you, mm -hmm. but you're taking their power away. And that, that's what I always thought. If I just took his power away from him and make him do something different, I won, I won the battle. Yeah, my little man, you know, he's three, so I, I, uh, I think I'm the same as far as if he plays the game, that'd be great. I'd love it. Um, but I feel like uh, the team, the team aspect, I think, is important, regardless if it's baseball, like you mentioned before. If it, it could be any basketball, it could be soccer, it could be anything, wrestling, you know, and anything that teaches you to be accountable to somebody else besides your parents or your family in general, I think is a big deal. And and that's one of the best teams of, that we've been able to put on the field have been ones that play for each other, not just play for yourself. And, and that's, that's a lot of life lessons in this game. But um, personally, I would rather have him be a starter <laughs> as a starter. The relief life is not an easy life, and you know that. You can attest to that. But, you know, a starter or even a regular everyday position player, just because, uh, you know, if he's got my, any bit of my personality and my... Uh, my tenacity, like it's being able to play every day is something that I, I miss since uh, since college. Like I've always wanted to be there and being a reliever is as close as I can get where at least I have an opportunity to have the phone call and have that be my, my name to get up and get going. And that's what that's what's exciting for me about the bullpen. But, you know, if I could be an everyday position player, I would I would do that in a heartbeat. Yeah. Yeah. We, all, we, we should be like shortstop. We should have played shortstop <laughs> back in the day. Yeah. Renteria, are you kidding me? Nah, come on. Well, he's a hero, like way a long time he's ago. He's only got like three game winning hits in the World <laughs> Series. Come on, I could have done that. It could have been us. It's exactly right. That's exactly right. We're and like, he, what about Bob? That's what we're like. What about yeah. Bob? <laughs> hey, what about what that's about us. Howie? What about Klein? That's oh, that would have been great. But that's the life of a lefty reliever too. And we're always exactly. always getting put down. Always, we're always the last man on the totem pole. It's okay. This has been an exclusive presentation from SFG Productions.